Welcome, and I'm glad that you decided to join me as we continue in chapter one of the book, God's Roadmap. And I am glad to be going through this and glad to be going back over the events of my life as I get into the meat and potatoes of the book very soon. But I'm continuing on my personal testimony, and specifically today on a trip to Lake Havasu with the youth ministry of Sea Ridge Community Church in Laguna Hills, California. We were in Lake Havasu, California. It's on the Arizona border. The lake is divided by the border, <laughs> and so half in one state, half in the other. And uh, to give you an idea, the Colorado River feeds that lake. And so I talked about going out into Lake Havasu last night, and just me and the Lord, and be baptized. And I did go out. And I, felt, I said that I felt a firmer grasp on what it meant to die to Christ and to rise up to him, totally given over to his lordship, so I did it. I couldn't believe how cold the water was. I had never uh, experienced water so cold, but I did it anyway. I was shivering so much. When I came out, I could hardly stand it. I felt like I was going to come unhinged. I was just shaken to death. And uh, and uh, at the same time, I noticed that the small cloud over the lake must have been the center of a low-pressure cell because the cloud uh, clouds were coming from every direction to feed that cloud and it was growing bigger and bigger. Also, all around the horizon were distant thunderstorms flashing, which was really neat to, to watch. I asked the Lord to show me himself, uh, or show himself to me. Uh, I just felt so bold with all the things that were happening that I asked the Lord to show himself to me, and, and then I saw it a cloud that was passing by me, being drawn into the main cloud over the lake, was going by, and then it stopped. And it was perfectly still, and formed a perfect man's face. From the mouth of the man came forth a sword, just like was described of Jesus in the book of Revelation written by the Apostle John. The cloud was like that for what seemed to be minutes as I marveled over it. Then, just as if a hand wiped the image away, it was gone and the cloud moved away into the larger cloud. As soon as, it, as soon as that got wiped away, the cloud immediately started moving to the larger cloud. While it stayed still, the face was there. It was as if I got used to looking at it, and I was the an initial, ah, was over that, God just wiped it away and then whew, gone. And so uh, that was pretty incredible. And so I was continually singing and praising God, and I was so uplifted in the spirit that there was no way I was going to go to bed now. I was singing every praise song that I knew, and after an hour I sang, Holy, Holy, Holy. I had... a uh, seen several dozen shooting stars at night because we were going through a meteorite belt that the earth passes through every 
first week of August every year. What happened as I sang was amazing, though. As I sang the words, holy, 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 three shooting stars fell exactly in time with my singing the words, holy, holy, holy. And each was exactly parallel to each other. So it went, holy, holy, holy. They were just three parallel stars, but holy, holy, holy. And <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. I was about ready to burst. I was so full of joy. I mean, the timing was exact. I have played music and I've played under several conductors. And I know about timing of of um, the meter of a song, and it was exactly on the holy each time. And uh, during that whole time, I watched the stars and the clouds grow over Havasu City and across the lake whose lights were glimmering. So I watched the stars and the cloud growing and Havasu City's lights that were glimmering across the lake. I knew many of the stars because I had a telescope a few years prior and my carpool partner, Ken, had just got one and was enjoying looking at the planets. Jupiter was always up when we headed to work somewhere between 3 and 5 a.m. and He would proudly point out Jupiter. And uh, it was in the Pleiades, or right next to the Pleiades, which is known as the Seven Sisters. I had seen them rise, the Pleiades, in the sky that night as I was looking directly east across the lake. Jupiter had at some point slipped behind what seemed to be a distant cloud. I hadn't seen it for well over a, a half an hour. I was so full of praise to God at that time with all that had happened. Being, I began feeling very bold. <laughs> and I was thinking of the scripture from 2 Kings chapter 6. And when the servant of the man of God arose early, it says, and went out, there was an army surrounding the city and horses and chariots. And the servant said to him, Alas, my master. Let me say that again while I turn the place, page. Alas, my master. What shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. I was thinking, how wonderful to have my eyes open to see like that. So I asked the Lord to open my eyes so that I might see. I was being bold. I'm telling you, I was being bold. It was a miraculous supernatural night. And so I said it. <laughs> and immediately, what seemed to be the tiniest little cloud, and I believe possibly an angel moved just to the left side of Jupiter. It moved, and there was Jupiter. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Jupiter was bouncing slightly up and down in the sky. Nothing else was moving. I was thinking that I was seeing things as I covered my left eye, my left eye, then my right eye. But it, it continued to bounce no matter what. It wasn't, my eyes weren't playing tricks on me. Uh, it was bouncing and 
it was still bouncing uh, with just my left eye looking. Still nothing else was moving. This went on for what seemed to be about a minute, and just when the initial excitement was over, the largest shooting star I'd ever seen in my life proceeded forth from where Jupiter was in the sky, which was about 30 degrees over the horizon. So if you had straight out, 30 degrees up is like this, not very far up. 90 degrees is over your head, straight over your head. So one third of the way down to the horizon, which is where Havasu City was. So it had risen up in the sky a little bit, right? So it proceeded from, uh, let's see, <laughs> it proceeded from Jupiter uh, across the sky and came directly towards me. It went all the way across the sky, directly over my head. And when I couldn't lean my head back another inch, it stopped. It seemed to be, uh, it never seemed to diminish in intensity. It just went out. It wasn't for a couple of years that I had read the scripture again, but was shocked that it, excuse me, and was shocked at what I didn't know. I knew there were angels on the mountains in chariots in the second king's description of what the servant saw, but look how it describes the chariots. Behold, the mountains, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So these chariots of fire, there was a movie about chariots of fire that talked about the chariots of fire that the angels rode in. Just like a spaceship. How do they get to and from? They don't materialize here on the earth. They come from heaven. They're sent from heaven. How do they get here? They ride in something. In a little, and Ezekiel describes a couple of times a craft in, what, in which the angels were riding. You can read it in the book of Ezekiel. But I'm telling you that I saw a chariot of fire go all the way from Jupiter straight out directly over my head and stopped directly over my head. And if that's not symbolic of something, I don't know what is, but <laughs> the Lord was with me that night. The Lord had called me to something bigger than myself. And I'm still moving toward that calling even today and so now I know many people would say <laughs> you're crazy and God doesn't work like that doesn't work that way but in his word it says in Joel chapter 2 verse 30 and I will show you wonders in the heavens and on the earth before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. That was a wonder for me. It wasn't a wonder for you because you didn't see it. But I'm telling you, it was a wonder for me. And he will show wonders in heaven and on the earth before the great and awesome day of the Lord. He's trying to wake us up and to get us moving in what he is doing. I was astonished by the events and I told my pastor friend Rocky Bales about the event and he immediately thought that the shooting star that was coming forth towards me was and caused Jupiter to bounce in the sky uh, as it 
as alert. Excuse me. Let me read this again. <laughs> I told my friend Rock, uh, of mine, Rocky Bells, about the event, and he immediately thought that the shooting star that was coming toward me caused Jupiter to bounce in the sky as light reflected, refracted off of it before it entered the atmosphere. It was directly between me and Jupiter for the, that entire minute that Jupiter bounced. I would have to agree with that assess assessment of why Jupiter was bouncing. It was an amazing event, and I'll never forget it. It wasn't long after that happened that I decided to give my legs a break, and I walked back up to the bluff across from the trailer, which overlooked the lake, and I sat down in a chair there for the final three hours of the night. And that's where I am going to stop tonight. I've gone over uh, several minutes, but I wanted to encapsulate that entire event tonight and have to say that it was the most incredible night of my life. I know that there's going to be more incredible nights. And uh, God gives me incredible nights every time he brings somebody in my life to minister to. And so I'm praising him for that. And I'm praising God for everyone who watches this video and it touches their lives. And I praise him for you. God bless you. You have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow. Be blessed in Jesus' name.